Yazan. One of, if not, the best far player Overwatch has ever seen. From being featured on one of Super TF's most popular videos with over a million views. Dude, this guy's a nutcase on Farah. This guy's an actual fucking sicko. How is he so goddamn good at Farah? To forging his own YouTube and Twitch content, to more recently, occupying all the top 10 damage spots on the EU competitive leaderboard, he's recently come under fire from two controversies. The latter of which is more serious, accusing Yazan of leaking underage pictures of a 16 year old. But we'll get to those allegations later. For now, I'll briefly cover Yazan's background in case you don't know who he is, then moving on to the controversies and why Yazan hasn't responded. Before I begin, I quickly want to mention my private coaching. Season 6 is just around the corner, so if you want to get ahead of the curve, I strongly recommend that you check the link below. It's no secret that for a long time, yazan has been highly respected by popular streamers because of how talented he is at Farah, a hero that you barely see at the high ranks. Now he's got a pass on console and I'll briefly mention that later, but for now, he extended out his talents in 2019 from becoming a ranked warlord into becoming a pro player for about 4 years. His first documented pro experience was in 2019, winning a B tier tournament. He then commonly played in contenders in 2020 for a team called Avoided, who did decently well all things considered. Then dipping his toe into the Saudi E-Leagues in 2021, regularly attaining a podium finish, and as you can see, last year, his Liquipedia is just stacked. A lot of first place finishes, and most recently, Yazan has been playing for Team Saudi Arabia in the Overwatch World Cup, who finished first place at 7-0 in their group in the EMEA conference. So, where does the controversy begin? Well, unfortunately, a notable Saudi Arabian Overwatch streamer, Legendary OW, was co-streaming the Overwatch World Cup, and one of the castles of the World Cup was trans. Unfortunately, because Saudi Arabia have one of the worst LGBT equality indexes in the world, both legally and in public opinion, it's not necessarily a surprise that Legendary ended up making some transphobic comments. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, oh, is the monkey is, on the right side? <laughs> is animals allowed in... <laughs> Why you have animal casting? <laughs> Why is there pig casting the game? As a result, the Overwatch World Cup removed the Legendary from all official Overwatch esports programs and Legendary ended up double downing with a quote tweet. So, where does Yazan come in in all of this? Well, another Saudi Arabian player, Sir Majed, who's played for the Florida Mayhem in the past, and is currently a player for the Toronto Defiant, unfollowed Legendary after this event. And Yazan himself spoke about this, saying that, because he's Arab, he's disappointed that Majed unfollowed on Legendary, that he was supposed to still be his quote-unquote true friends. This clip eventually made the rounds on Overwatch TMZ, as well as on Twitter, with Twitter celebrity Money Folder saying, Yazan is so fucking funny. Bro is ranting about Sir Majed, because Majed committed the crime of unfollowing a dude who called a trans person an animal and pig on stream. Thankfully, Sir Majed shows that you can still have individual thoughts, even when your culture commonly supports the opposite beliefs. However, that's only the beginning. Roughly two weeks later, a Google document on Yazan drops, alleging the following. Before Yazan's time on PC, he was actually a PS4 console player, and during this time, Yazan allegedly had group chats with people that shared around people's nudes. The document alleges he had a collection on his phone of just about everyone who had their pictures sent around. You could go to him if you wanted pictures of anyone, even minors. The first victim, whose Twitter is Claude or Mercy, was 16 at the time during 2019 and was in a relationship with Yazan. Allegedly, when they broke up, Yazan shared her pictures to his friends and others in the community, often being used as ammo under her tweets. While there's no evidence from her Twitter, the maker of the document links a Reddit post referring to the thread existing. In other words, if the thread never existed, why would the Redditor mention it? It would make no sense. Around the same time, a second victim emerges. Yazan was eager to finish the season at rank 1, and he was known for his win trading and account sharing to fill up the leaderboards as shown by an archived tweet I managed to find. And when someone threw his game, he threatened her 
by sending her friends news and DMs, as well as stating that he'd post it on his Instagram story, which had 15,000 followers at the time, if she didn't stop throwing his games. The two screenshots are on screen, and while people have pointed out that Yazan's Twitter handle is different to what it is now, that's just because his account got suspended. Now onto the third victim. The proof of this involves an exchange between the victim and her friend, talking about how it was only a matter of time until Yazan would eventually leak the girl's nudes that he was in a relationship with. The name of two girls were involved in the DM exchange, hence the two different colours in the screenshots blurs out their respective names. There's also an attached video showing proof that this happened in 2019 and that this also helps that the screenshots are real and not doctored by a third party app thanks to Apple's software integration with Instagram. And that's all the evidence there is. The maker of the doc acknowledges how light the evidence is, stating that they hesitated about even making the document in the first place. Unlike other situations, like the EVA situation or the Aspire situation, this isn't a slam dunk case. There's also a few more extras to the document. The first is that Claudia, before she privated her Twitter, tweeted out that she was indeed the first victim who was 16. The Yazan doc Twitter account quote tweeted and posted this under a very old tweet of Yazan in late 2018 showing that Yazan duoed with the skull and as a result, Yazan later deleted the tweets. The second extra is that there is additional testimony from another girl Yazan knew in 2019. She decided to remain anonymous, so skeptics can say that this can just be entirely fake, but some could argue that, in conjunction with all the other testimonies, it makes this more valid. And lastly, the account would tweet to tweet from user Farsien claiming that he was in a party with Yazan years ago where people were just passing around pictures. I myself can vouch that Farsien is a prominent member in the console community and that this isn't a random Twitter user because I myself was in the console community. But unfortunately, he has no proof of the PS4 party chat, likely because he doesn't even know how to record it, let alone actually doing it in the moment. Unsurprisingly, as soon as this document came out, absolutely nothing happened to Yazan. He never made a response and will likely never make one, and he still streams regularly, pulling in 4 digit viewers as if nothing ever happens. His fans either completely dismiss the screenshots as fake, and or they justify what Yazan did as being okay because he was 15 to 16 at the time. Acting like a Gustavo Fring, and that the allegations against you aren't worthy of a response will only make people who believe that you're guilty double down on their beliefs. Entonces, Gustavo. No tengo respuesta. Gustavo. Debes hablar. No tienes como defenderte. Con todo respeto. No me parece que esto merezca una respuesta. It's like that saying, innocent people don't run. As for now, Yazan is technically doing what's best for his business. When somebody actually pushed Yazan on answering the allegations in match chat, he immediately deflected. By choosing to not respond or constantly deflect, it draws less attention than if he were to actually respond due to the Streisand effect, and he always has that reason to not respond by merely saying that the allegations aren't worth responding to, because there isn't a boatload of evidence. But honestly, even if this case was a slam dunk, it honestly wouldn't matter. The internet is the internet, people move on and forget things in a few days, if not a few weeks, unless they face legal repercussions. If you have a strong mental and you keep making engaging content that people will want, that people will want to watch either on Twitch or on YouTube, you can and will survive the worst allegations against you, even if they're undoubtedly true. Anyways, that's it for the video. Hopefully this helped you catch up to speed with the Azan situation, and let me know your thoughts down below. Shout out to my channel members: Wix, Xbenny, Broken by 50%, Sasfring, Chris Jones, T Meg, Resolucio, and Craig. Until next time.